Welcome everybody to the uh, Consumer Market Relaunch and Empower by Allsup orientation. This is uh, our first orientation for a very exciting time, which is the launch of Empower. I know everybody, everybody has heard of that, right? Raise, you, right? Okay, good, 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 good. Yes, everybody's working very hard on this. Uh, we're all very, very excited about Empower. It's a new, a new step for the organization. It's a definitely a differentiator in the marketplace, which we are all thrilled about. Uh, what today we're going to talk through a few things to give you insight. All right. The first thing we're going to launch is uh, show you is the Empower by Also video. We created an eight-minute video uh, that demos it. This video has already been out in the marketplace. Jim uh, brought it to Washington, D.C. to share with people there to get them excited about it and get them behind it. Uh, Mary Dale shared it also with some people in D.C. and then Fakisha and team have already shared it with some other partners. Really using this to get people excited, so I'm going to share that with you. And I'm also going to share with you the marketing strategy of how, uh, when, if you build it, they will come, doesn't necessarily work. So we built it and now we got to create the awareness out in the marketplace to drive traffic to it. Then I'm going to turn it over to Carl Bissig and he's going to share the customer service and operation strategy uh, behind this. And then I'm going to come back and we're going to talk about the super powerful combination of Empower by Allsup and the all of you, the employees of Allsup and what that means uh, with our superhero theme that we put together. After that, uh, we're going to jump into some Q&A and definitely please participate while you're going on. Think about your questions that you want to ask Carl, myself and anybody will answer anything. All right. So now let's jump on in and uh, share the demo with you. Applying for Social Security Disability Insurance can be a confusing and difficult process, especially without the right help. This is why we created Empower by Allsup, a dual-purpose online tool designed to make it simpler and easier than ever before to apply for disability benefits. First, it determines your likelihood of qualifying for SSDI benefits and then walks you through the application process. Secondly, it can help you use these benefits to go back to work if and when you're medically able. And with Allsup as your representative, you can accelerate your disability application while increasing your chances of being approved at the initial application level by 50%. Let's take a look at how Empower works. The first step is to register with Empower. Registration is conveniently accessible online through Allsup's website at www.allsup.com. A minimal amount of information is required to register and all data is kept secure. After you register, you will receive a confirmation email that includes a link to confirm your registration. Then simply log in and complete your profile including defining security questions for that additional level of security. You're now ready to take the ALSEP SSDI assessment. The ALSEP SSDI assessment is free takes 15 to 20 minutes to complete and ask the initial questions we need to understand your unique situation and disability to determine the likelihood of being approved for SSDI benefits. Easy to follow and understand, each section of the assessment starts with an informative video about what to expect as you navigate questions regarding your SSDI eligibility and your desire and ability to go back to work upon medical recovery. You can work at your own pace, from the comfort of your home anytime at your convenience on your computer, tablet, or mobile device. Empower is compatible for the hearing and visually impaired and includes the ability to quickly increase or decrease text size to your visual preference. If you need help along the way, you can listen to audio guidance from various members of the Allsup team. Or you can also click on the Help and Hints tab to see helpful tips regarding the current set of questions and to access the 24-7 live chat and email support. If you want to look at the answers you provided, simply select the Your Answers tab for review. At any time, you can click the Manage Profile tab if you'd like to change or update personal information, including your email address, password, 
security questions, and your mailing address. If you need to take a break, you can always save your answers, exit, and log back in later to complete the assessment. At the end of the ALSUP SSDI assessment, we ask a few questions to help us better understand your decision-making process and the features you like in Empower. This will help us improve the Empower user experience and help more people get the benefits they deserve. After completing the ALSUP SSDI assessment, you'll receive your personalized ALSUP SSDI indicator, which provides valuable information about your eligibility and what to do next in the SSDI application process. If the ALSUP SSDI indicator determines that your SSDI eligibility and approval for benefits looks promising, your next step is to complete your SSDI application. You can do this by simply continuing with Empower. An informative video will show you how to get started, and then you can move on to the application questionnaires. With the help of ALSUP as your representative, you have a better chance of being approved for SSDI benefits. ALSUP's award rate at the initial application level is significantly higher as compared to those who apply without help through the Social Security Administration. Empower leverages decades of ALSUP's expert SSDI advocacy and knowledge to ask the right questions that the SSA requires, but in a logical, thoughtful way to help you understand exactly what information is needed to provide the right answers. Empower provides a personalized experience based on your answers. Only the questionnaires that pertain to your individual situation are presented and need to be completed. Empower automatically pre-populates any information you have already provided, so you never have to answer the same question twice. As you work through the SSDI application questionnaires, 24-7 access to a live representative by phone is added to the existing live chat and email customer support. With Empower, the forms needed to assign ALSUP as your representative and complete your SSDI application can be emailed, faxed, or mailed to you. It's your choice. After you complete and submit all your questionnaires, an ALSUP team member will review your answers for accuracy and then submit your application to the SSA as quickly as possible. In addition to guiding you through the SSDI application process, Empower is designed to help you return to work if that might be an option for you. SSDI benefits not only provide a needed monthly income while you can't work, you can use these benefits to go back to work if and when your medical recovery allows you to do so. These benefits are extended and protected for several years after you would go back to work and are still there for you if you have to stop working again. They're also protected from termination if your medical condition improves, but only if you're taking steps that will get you back to work. Without these steps, they will be subject to termination when your claim is reviewed. If your employer has not yet terminated your employment, it's important to notify them in writing of your desire to come back to work. Upon your authorization, we can help you by sending a letter to your employer on your behalf. Your employer is required under the Americans with Disabilities Act to hold a job open for you while you're on disability leave. There's no set time limit on this leave, provided it does not cause your employer an undue hardship. Also works with employers in a collaborative manner to prevent such a hardship. With Empower, you can say goodbye to the frustration of applying for SSDI benefits without help, spending long hours on the phone, filling out confusing and redundant government paperwork, waiting in long lines at government offices, and inflated legal fees and other incidental charges. If the ALSUP SSDI assessment indicates you may be eligible for benefits and you choose ALSUP to represent your SSDI application, we only charge a fee if your claim is approved. Our fee is regulated by the SSA and you don't pay any other upfront or incidental costs. From the time you apply for and receive disability benefits until returning to work if possible, Empower by ALSUP is designed to take the guesswork and complexity out of the SSDI process. At ALSUP, we genuinely care about our customers and believe in creating opportunities to meet the needs of people with disabilities. That's what's so compelling and innovative about Empower. It offers the tools, support, and superior service that you need when filing a disability claim. Empower is all about you. So let's get started. 
Visit www.allsup.com and take charge with Empower today. All right, what'd you think? It was all right? Do you feel like after watching that, you, uh, as a consumer who knows nothing, you would think, I get it, I understand what they're doing, and be honest. Good, good, I'm getting lots of nods, the camera can't see it, but I'm getting lots of nods as in yes. So now we have this great tool. Prior to the tool, I wanna to point out, that tool would not exist without each of you and everyone that works at Allsup because this tool is based on 30 plus years of really, really smart people and the work that the, all of you have done and put into this. So just know that, that it is really a combination, and I mean, you'll hear this theme several times, it's really a combination of the people, us as the Allsup employees, with technology that is moving forward. That is our differentiator in the marketplace. Differentiating ourselves in the marketplace is the key of what we need to do and where the marketing strategy is. Before you go to market, you have to have a brand. Has anybody heard of Google? Yeah? Google does a wonderful job of branding themselves. Have you heard of Apple? Another one. And then when I said both of those brands are, how about, uh, let's go with American Express? You've heard of that? And when I said each of those brands, you had an image in your head of who that brand is. So if that brand walked in the door, you would be able to recognize who they are. That's what we're doing for also. We're building, all of us together, are building who Allsup is. And what's wonderful about coming in, very honored to be uh, the VP of Marketing here, coming into Allsup, we have a fantastic brand. The work that has been done to date is wonderful. Uh, it's based on very, very true values that our consumers are going to believe. The big thing we need to do is we need to create the awareness, and when we do, we need to create that trust. And that's work that each of you do every day with our, with our clients and our claimants. And the, in that trust, we're building knowledge that we are the experts in the industry. But not only are we the experts that they can trust, but they want to trust because there's a human to human emotional tie. And the brand that we have right now coming in, our vision, our positioning, the tone, the voice, our personality, all of our brand story is prime and is wonderful. Fantastic place for us to launch. So now that we, we have a good brand, it is a good brand story that I truly believe consumers are going to latch on to and want us to help them, as opposed to our competition, which we'll get to. We have to create value propositions in the marketplace. And these are things that are differentiating us from everyone else. So these are phrases and sayings that we will put out there and that we're gonna try to educate consumers on of why they would want to come to Allsup. And this is the big one. Uh, Empowered by Allsup is a dual purpose online tool for social security disability benefits. It can help those qualify for these benefits if you're eligible and then use these benefits to go back to work when you medically recover. This dual message no one else in the marketplace is doing. This is a huge differentiator for us. And we're, we're truly blazing the trail, as Jim would say, on creating awareness on the fact that it's not just get on to SSDI benefits and be on them forever. It's get on SSDI benefits to help you. And if you are able to go back to work, we also are gonna help you do that. And it's, the studies are showing that about 20% of the people we help actually can and want to go back to work and are gonna be able to go back to work and we're gonna help them do that. The questions, this was what I was alluding to before, the questions that we ask in the ALSIP SSDI assessment, that's all based on 32 years of SSDI representative experience. That's everybody here, which is phenomenal. It's, it's all based on the intellect of ALSIP. It's not a just give us your first name, last name, email address, and then we'll put you in a queue and try to call you. It's actually the assessment is asking the same questions we ask, the smart questions we ask, to get to that, are they eligible? What is the likelihood of them being eligible? 
The, another big one is completing this application on your own can be very, very confusing. It's complicated to where if you answer honestly, you could get denied. But it's the intelligence of ALSIP and our experience that know how to ask the right questions to get to the right answers that the SA is looking for. Again, that's a huge differentiator, which is why we have a higher percentage rate of getting approvals than if a person just does it on their own at the SSA. Again, all of, the, all of this research and looking at these differentiators and uh, value propositions is to create that moment in the consumer's mind of, I need to get me some also because I want my benefits. That's the key. Talking about uh, the percentages, our award rate at initial application is 50% as compared to 33% if you do it yourself. So this is, uh, the consumers have a 50% better chance of getting approved if they work with also. Who loves a BOGO? <laughs> Gotta have a BOGO. As a marketer, if, if you were able to go to market with 50%, with you have a 50% better chance, that gets our attentions as consumers. 5% better, 10% eh, better, maybe, 25, oh, okay, now you got my attention. 50% better chance of getting approved why would I not do this? I'm interested, I'm intrigued, tell me more. That's gonna be huge for us in the marketplace. With the value propositions, you heard me say reasons to believe. All of us as consumers are out there in the marketplace and we consciously or subconsciously are always looking for why should I care? What, what's in it for me? What, what are you gonna do for me? And that's just inherent in us as consumers. The reasons to believe for our consumers are the fact that there's 32 years of experience that I will be able to leverage, 32 years of experience to help me get the benefits I deserve. I'm interested. We were representing convenience that they can do this from their home. They can do this on and multi, across multiple devices on their own time whenever they want. If they're an insomniac, 3 a.m. in the morning is when they're like on it and they're determined to. Uh, see if they get approved for benefits and then go ahead and apply. They can do that with us. We simplified the process uh, throughout, making it using common language. So it's not government language that's confusing like a tax form, it's actual language that people speak. So the assessment and the questionnaires are all easy to use. We're incorporating video and audio because everybody learns in different ways. Some people are reading learners, some like to watch videos. Generations coming up, all are going to be watching videos. That's going to be huge for us in the next three, five, ten years. Um, and we got the audio help. And it reduces time because it's smart. We only display the questions that a claimant needs when they need them, as opposed to doing it on their own at the government where it's everything and they have to figure that out. This is as quick as possible, convenient as possible. It improves accuracy because we are looking through everything, looking uh, to make sure that the correct fields are filled out and, and the forms. This is a huge one that Carl's gonna talk about, the 24-7. Uh, that is a must, really, if we're gonna be online and people are gonna be doing this at all time with the convenience, we really need to have 24-7 support. That is huge right now, uh, live uh, chat and email, and then phone at a certain point. Again, Carl will talk more about that. And we're, we're leveraging responsive design. Responsive design is that it works across all platforms, desktop, laptop, a tablet, mobile, uh, which is a must right now. Large percentage of our uh, consumers are on mobile. They come, we capture them on mobile. And they either stay on mobile or go to a desktop to continue the process seeing great numbers in uh, mobile and tablet. Uh, it's 508 compliant. This is also a must for a company like us because 508 compliant means that all of our tools comply with the uh, people with disabilities. So the readers can read all of our text. You can increase the size, decrease the size of our text. Everything will work for that. I think that's pretty important. And of course, all the data is secure. We are capturing a lot of personal identifiable information and all of our data is secure. Again, going back into creating that trust and comfort level for our consumers to want to use us. 
So now you have the uh, functional beliefs, we have the emotional benefits. This is all getting into the mindset of the consumer. Also has the industry leading award rate and they can help me get my benefits. That is definitely an emotional point of where I, should I do this myself on my own? I don't have the leading award rates. I should use somebody that does. And with also as my representative, not only will I increase my chances of being approved, they will get me, help me go back to work if I'm able. Again, no one else is doing that in the marketplace. That's a huge differentiator for us, very exciting. With ALSUP, I have the best chance of getting it right the first time. As we all know, uh, getting denied, majority of people get denied. The consumer's number one goal is to get that financial relief as soon as possible. And we're positioning ourselves in the marketplace as we are gonna be the ones that are gonna get you your benefit as soon as we possibly can. We're gonna help you do it right so you don't get denied, so that we can actually get people approved at level one. From a marketing perspective, we're going heavy after level one, uh, trying to get as many people as we can. Number one, level one with the ability to go back to work. And I'm gonna get into a bit more of the target in a second. And emotionally, it's the best way to reduce time for me to get my award. And with also, of course, I pay no fees. So there's no out of pocket until I actually they get the award and then uh, my, I have to pay. So this is huge. So I already don't have money and I don't have to invest any money and I can get the help from the best leader in the industry. These are all things that if I as a consumer and looking for help, I feel pretty confident that we present all of these to them, they're gonna to want to come to us and they're gonna, like I said, they're gonna get themselves some also to help them. All right, who are we going after? Number one target is the uh, disabled individual A. We're actually going to evolve these personas to uh, have names and faces to go along with them. But this is the individual, 50-50 male, female, 35 to 55, less severe condition that has the ability to go back to work within 12 to 18 months. These are the quick hits for us as a business. Uh, our goal every day is to help as many people as possible get the benefits they deserve. Our goal combined every day is to generate as much revenue as possible so that we can continue to help even more people get the benefits they deserve. It's, that's the business that we're in, which is why this disabled A has, that is the highest revenue potential. Uh, individual B, very similar to A, but may not have uh, a high likelihood of going back to work. Still want to help them, and actually that's a majority. It's looking at like about 80% of the people that we help will fall into the bucket individual B. We also are targeting, we know that a lot of people that we help can't do it themselves, and they have adult caregivers that are the ones that are actually filling out the forms, helping them. So we're gonna be targeting those individuals as well to create awareness. Huge, as we know, which is the uh, support social organizations, families, doctors. There's a stat out there that 90% of us believe or recommend from our family and friends. Even the, even the family that you're not so sure of, you still probably believe them because they're family and friends. 70% of us will believe the reviews of complete strangers when we're going to shop for something and we start reading those reviews. If we go down as consumers and we read three positive and one negative, I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna buy that BOGO. I'm gonna get me two pair of shoes, one buy one, get one free, absolutely. Look, they said they're great. Where only 10% of us will actually believe what a brand puts out in the marketplace about themselves, which is as heavy, and that's who we are as consumers, so we have to play on that which is where referral and recommend are huge in our area. Individuals referring their family, friends, going out and seeing reviews, getting the advice from hospital workers, caregivers. If they tell an individual, yes, you should do also, those individuals are coming to us and we are helping them. All right, so we're going to market with campaigns and ads. Campaigns is a series of communications across multiple platforms that is all reinforcing a unified message and reason to believe. 
each of us uh, see, see messages and campaigns every day. We're bombarded with those messages. Our goal is to put together the right types of campaigns with the right messaging that answer those, use those reasons to believe and answer those questions and to create the attention in the marketplace that's gonna drive us, drive them to us. So what I'm gonna show you now is the fact that uh, not only is Empower a differentiator in the marketplace, but our campaigns need to be a differentiator in the marketplace. And when we did the initial uh, competitive research, we were very excited to see the co competition because basically the competition is the government, very boring, very stale, very uh, not exciting at all. And I think there is a, uh, some competition that are sporting cowboy hats and glasses and then other uh, lawyers and attorneys are using scare tactics uh, as their marketing strategy. So it was very, very excited uh, that we are gonna be able to go to market with our brand, our emotional brand, our human to human brand, our we care about people brand that will differentiate us from everything that's out there. Because what's out there is they're not personal and they're not hopeful and they're really not helpful at all. So what we came up with are three, three campaigns to hit on. Do it right the first time. It should be all about you and reinventing the SSDI journey. So we're taking those three campaigns and right now we're launched in region five of the SSA in these states, these six states right now. Uh, we are out there hitting on paid, owned, and earned media. So paid media is when we buy it. That's paid search on Google, on Bing. That's paid display ads on websites that, uh, that people are going to that we want to get their attention. That is money that we put out to get exposure. Owned is when we leverage our properties, allsup.com, our social media sites, Everybody aware that we do have a Facebook page? Have you all liked it? We'll talk about that, excellent. You know, and we're, we're tweeting and we got a blog. All of that is our own media and we need to leverage that as much as possible. The big, the big score is earned media. Earned media is when people are forwarding those posts to their networks and then the people in those networks are forwarding those posts to those people and those and so on and so on those numbers get astronomically big and that's all free advertising because people are talking about it. And if we look at it, what we just were talking about earlier is referral is huge, recommend is huge, earn media is the sweet spot for us. The more we can grow that, the better we're gonna be. And later I'll uh, say how you can get involved with that. But um, these are a few uh, maybe recognizable uh, brands in the marketplace that you may have seen around. These are all areas to where also will be leveraging across the board of paid, owned, and earned to create as much awareness as possible. Very exciting. So, paid search. If an individual types in also social security disability, that's called a branded search because it has the word also in it. So the individual is further down the uh, awareness, what's called awareness funnel. They know who we are and they're actively searching. That person could be somebody that was referred to us by a social worker and they know who ALSUP is. Right now, when, we, when somebody types in ALSUP Social Security Disability, we show up in the paid area. This is a paid ad area, ALSUP, your SSDI expert. We also dominate the organic area. This is the sweet spot in search to where we want to own and we do own, of course, for our branded search. Next step is to, own, is to work on a non-branded search like social security disability benefits. These are people who haven't heard about us yet and they're just out there looking for help. And right now we show up in the paid area, disability benefits, allsup.com. So when they're looking for awareness, we show up there. Our next step is to kick the social security off of position one, page one of Google so that we show up right here on the organic area. In this area, we do not pay when somebody clicks. 
In this area, we pay when somebody clicks, and that rate varies across the board. So when you're out there in Google and you're searching, do me a favor, don't click on any of the ads, because every time you do, we have to pay for that. Unless you need disability help, then go ahead and click that and we'll be glad to help you. So when they do click on one of these ads, either in the ad, uh, paid area or in the organic area, we have built these landing pages. This is just the top portion of the landing page. This one here, you found a better way to apply for SSDI. I'm going to send links out that you can go see the landing page. You can actually go there from allsup.com homepage, but it scrolls on and has modules that educate on all the things that we were just talking about. The goal of the landing page is if we get their attention with an ad on what they searched against and the attention enough that they click on us, they get to the landing page and this is our opportunity to educate them, uh, inform them of who we are, what we do, expose them to our brand that we are compassionate, we care, and, and get them to click this button right here to take our free assessment. When they click that button, it takes them to the registration page to go into the assessment. <coughs> On allsup.com, we have the take our free SSDI assessment button, take our free SSDI assessment button, and, and in the navigation, those all take you to the registration page. If someone comes to allsup.com and they're not sure, they can learn more. When they hit learn more, it takes them to the, uh, to the landing page, to the registration. And then we redid allsup.com recently. I don't know if, if you've been out there to check it out. Uh, we're in the process of working through the rest of allsup.com, but the home page has actually been updated. So now a lot of what happens out in the marketplace is somebody will see an ad, they'll click on the ad, they'll go to the landing page. They may or may not take the assessment. Uh, we're not sure, we're, we're just exploring, you know, because we all are researchers. Um, and then they leave and they don't take the assessment. So what we're doing is called retargeting. So have you ever put something in Amazon shopping cart and then you were off on a site that's completely different and there's that object that I was debating on whether or not buying <laughs> and then I go to a completely different site and it's there following me and then you start to get creeped out because everywhere I go this thing is showing up. We're gonna do that to people <laughs> so that we can help them get the benefits that they deserve and that they need. That's called retargeting. And our retargeting campaigns for do it right the first time. So if they click on an ad and, and disappear, improve your odds by 50% for social security disability benefits, learn how, empowered by ALSUP. That will take you to the there is a better way to apply for social security disability benefits landing page. It, it should be all about you campaign, can't work due to a disability, what now? Apply for SSDI, empowered by ALSUP. That takes you to the what now. Now you have Empowered by also. It's the smart way to apply for Social Security Disability Insurance. The third one is in the Reinventing SSDI campaign, and that is your path to Social Security Disability benefits. Get started. Empowered by also. Take the right steps when you apply for Social Security Disability benefits. Empowered by also is here to help. So go ahead, I'm gonna send you the links, check it out. We have a lot of good stuff. We have uh, additional videos on each of the landing page. Again, we're trying to keep in front of them and, and make that sell. Each of us as consumers usually takes anywhere from three to seven impressions of a brand before we take action. We're hoping we can land closer to the two to three people because our target are actually highly motivated to get help. They're not just browsing around for a BOGO for shoes. They're actually like desperately looking for help to secure their life and their financial st stability. So we should be on the lower end of that, but we're still consumers and it takes multiple, multiple hits. Those uh, display ads are also going to be put out on Facebook to where we're going to be targeting individual groups on Facebook because one, the combination of that social sharing and that earned media and Facebook is huge uh, and we can really target in on these individuals based upon who they are, what they're searching, what they're talking about so that we can get in front of them that we're here for them and we can help them. So micro-targeting, there's SSA offices all over the country. 
and this is where people are going. And these SSA offices are filled with people sitting in waiting rooms, waiting and waiting. Wouldn't it be cool? We know where they are. They're right there. So let's go ahead and put a geofence around them. And while this individual is sitting there and waiting, surfing on their mobile device, up, up pops one of our ads that says, something like find out if you're eligible for ssdi benefits while you wait it takes 15 to 20 minutes they're waiting hours so while they're sitting here waiting they could technically see our ad go to the registration page register take the assessment find out that they do indeed like have a high likelihood of being approved for ssdi benefits and start filling out their background on medical before they ever talk to an ssa individual this right here gets Jim so excited, he like jumps out of the telepresence whenever we're talking about it. Very, very cool. So we're excited about this. We're going to launch this uh, in a little bit. We also are looking at this with, uh, in respect to hospitals. So there's a chance that uh, a hospital social worker could show up while they're on break mm -hmm. to create awareness about us in the marketplace. All right. So just as critical as the pre-launch, post-launch, we are constantly measuring and optimizing, seeing what's working, what's not working. Uh, our customer relationship marketing, we're closing the sales, seeing where they drop off and reaching out to them to keep them going, retargeting to keep them going. We're building our organic SEO, that's huge for us. We're gonna, and in social media, we're building our community and gaining earned media. So this is where you can come in as employees if you haven't already and you're so inclined, please do like, follow, re repost our social posts. Uh, Rebecca and Mary Dale and team, they put a lot of good content out there on our blogs and us as employees and ambassadors of our brand can help by, by pushing that all forward out into, out into the marketplace to create as much awareness as possible. With that, I'm gonna turn it over to Carl. Before you do, yes? could you introduce yourself? Oh, I am so sorry. Hi. Okay, I know Carl, but I know Sorry. Uh, yeah, my name is Mike Looning, and I am your VP of Marketing. Pleasure to meet you. <laughs> Susan, nice to meet you. My apologies. That's okay. I just didn't know who you were. <laughs> A little bit. No. <laughs> All right, as Mike said earlier, I am going to talk about the customer service and operations aspects of what we're doing uh, as we relaunch ourselves into the consumer marketplace. Uh, I'm gonna talk about the consumer market relaunch process flow chart. I'm gonna talk about the impacts on our DEC, our traditional uh, consumer uh, sales team. I'm gonna talk about our customer service team, which is the old CR, uh, DCS, CIC, as we're combining that. Uh, simultaneous with this change. Uh, talk about a little bit deeper about the assessment questionnaire, how it works, what it really does, and scoring, and then we'll talk a little bit about 24-7. So CMR process flow chart. Mike talked about the campaign and the landing page, how we find people, and so we wanted to sort of give you an overview of how this process works. So a potential customer finds us and we ask today everybody to register. They have to register to move forward. Registration, give me an email address, give me a little bit of information. They have to do that to move forward with us. Uh, registration leads them to a, an email that they have to push and confirm registration. That pushes them back to a profile page where we ask a little bit more information, a couple of security questions and so forth. And after they complete that, that leads them to the ALSEP SSDI assessment. Again, I'll explain a little bit more about that assessment in a few minutes. They finish the assessment, they get a score. They don't necessarily get a number, they just get a pass, fail, or some other, uh, some other activity. We describe that in internally as our post-submission instruction pages. So for those that pass, we lead them in one direction. For those that fail, we lead them in another direction. We have something called pass with issues. That leads them in another direction again. Again, I'll describe some of that in just a few minutes. For the ideal environment, those that take the assessment, pass, we lead them right to the next set of questionnaires. Today, the next set of questionnaires are our background medical questionnaires, our application questionnaires. Lead them directly to that. When they finish the questionnaires, only then do we solicit the forms. The forms in this case, we're talking about the 1696, 
the, the Met off and the fee agreement. So our process through this consumer process is a little bit different than our traditional approach. Uh, we get the forms back, and then what happens next for the claimant is we work on filing the case because now they've appointed us the rep they've appointed us the representative, and we actually do reach out to them with a phone call at that point in time. That's the new process. So just a reminder for you know some of you are more familiar with this with this than with others. The traditional flow, what we do today in our current BIC and DC environment, those are our traditional sales teams. The BIC focusing on the commercial LTD referrals, the DC focusing on consumer referrals, both groups still up and running. They screen the cases that are presented to them, either from the LTD or through consumer referrals. They then solicit and obtain forms. They sell and then they say, hey, in order for us to work with you, you got to fill out these forms. Same forms I just referred to, the 1696, the fee agreements, what have you. Okay. Then, once we get the forms back, we then launch our Empower questionnaires to them in one way, shape, or another. Okay. And then we get those back, we file the application. As I just described in the CMR flow, a little bit more condensed, we ask them to register, we ask them to take the assessment. We deliver forms to them at that, or deliver questionnaires to them at that point in time. Then, we solicit and obtain the forms to appoint us the representative, and then we file the application. Okay. This is the process we put in place as we move into this consumer environment. Um, we're already up and running, we'll talk about that in a minute. We've already got results, and so we're already evaluating what works and what doesn't work and how effective it is, and we'll be doing that from now you know, till, till never. All right. <laughs> So let's talk about a little bit about the DC and how they were how they were impacted. So we started soft launch on July 18th. So we're we're at a, been at this for about a month now. So, so the soft launch, uh, Mike describes allsup.com. Allsup.com. If people were searching us out, went to allsup.com, they would see a phone number that reached the DC, and they had an internet page, if you will. Fill out this information, hit the button, and somebody will call you back. That's the way the DEC worked. On July 18th, we changed that. We left the phone number up there, so they can still call the DEC, but those who find that page, if they say, hey, I want to be, take an assessment, they push the button and it leads them to the assessment. So now they have two approaches, if you will, at the DEC. In most of the advertising that Mike talked about, landing pages and so forth, we don't give that DEC number. Okay? It's odd on allsup.com, so if they go searching around, they'll find it, but otherwise, we're just pushing them into the assessment. The assessment is the future front door for all consumers. In the meantime, we're still using the traditional DEC approach for two reasons. One, we have established channels out there, CBR, um, other you know, agencies, social agencies, so forth, that have that number, that refer that way. And you have consumers that have been searching for a long time uh, that might have that number referenced. So we're still handling cases in the traditional way. The other thing we know, as Mike described, with all this new advertising that we're putting back out there, while we don't put the phone number out there, people will start searching. They're not going to just click the assessment and say, I'm going to go do this. Some do, and that's our goal, but others are going to go, hey, Allsup, I'm going to go figure out who that is. They, they find Allsup.com, they see a phone number, and they go, hey, I'm going to call these guys. So what we expected to see was more phone calls, and we're getting that. Okay? Now, we try to push them back to the assessment, or we explain what we're doing and how we're doing it. But in many cases, we go on and just do the traditional screening. We don't have enough people to do the traditional screening that we expect with all the additional activity. Okay? So we really want to push people to the assessment, and that's what we're doing. So we expected changes in work patterns. We got it. You know, we took away some of the traditional assessments that we were getting because they didn't have that page to, to fill in the internet, and we will call you back but at the same time, we got more phone calls. One of our next steps associated with the DC is to, to implement, they're still using the legacy system, but we can implement the DC, or the, excuse me, the assessment tool, the assessment questionnaire, and let them use that for their screenings over the phone, the same way that people are doing it themselves. Customer service team. Customer service team, as I alluded to, is the combination, as many of you know, it's the claims reps, the disability claims specialists, it's the CAs, it's the CIC, coming together in this new model, this new way to work, simultaneous with these changes. They're ready to support CMR. We're supporting customer consumer market relaunch 
um, at registration and assessment. So when people are registering and when they're assessment, we're only supporting them with chat and email. We're not giving them a phone number. The customer service team has, a, has one phone number. It's different from the old CIC numbers. It's different than the DEC numbers. Okay, DEC, they're calling for screening and sales. Customer service team has a phone number, but we don't provide it when we're working through registration assessment because it's a big funnel of people that are out there searching. We can't talk to all those people. We will support them with chat and email if they're looking for help, but we push them right back to the assessment. Do this, do that, let us help you, what have you. Let us help you register. Post-assessment for those who pass, very important. If they pass, we can support them with chat, email, and we provide them the phone number. Now, why do we want to do that? Because people who pass, we think are a good candidate for, uh, to, to earn an award, to get, obtain benefits. So at that point, we're willing to spend dollars to talk to those individuals. Can't talk to every consumer out there who thinks they might be interested in disability. We've tried that once before. It's very expensive. But we can talk to people who pass because now we've, we've profiled them, we've screened them, and we think, hey, you might be a good candidate, so I'm willing to invest a little bit more time in you. So we provide a phone number at that point. So the customer service team at this point is supporting three channels. They're supporting the traditional BIC process where they do the screening, they do the selling, they get the 1696, and they pass it to the customer service team. They're supporting the DEC, who also does the screening, the selling, gets the 1696, and passes it to the customer service team. And now they're supporting the consumer market relaunch, where we're hoping the customer does the assessment, the customer passes, the customer gets, customer gets started in Empower on their own, requests the forms that they need, fills those out, gets them back to us, and then we start supporting them. Okay? Let's talk a little bit more about the assessment queue and scoring. So the assessment questionnaire in Empower, it's about 47 to 56 questions. Okay? Why 47 to 56? There's a couple nuances depending on age and other things. If you answer a question a certain way, we'll give you some additional questions. Otherwise, it's basically the same questionnaire for everybody. It takes 15 to 20 minutes. It's about the person who believes they're disabled. They should know the answers. It's about them or they've got somebody there helping them. Okay? It's a profile. It doesn't get into specifics. It asks you how many doctors you have and doctor's visits, but it doesn't say who is your doctor and what's their address. Okay? It asks you about whether you're working or not working. It, it asks you if you're taking prescription drugs, but it doesn't ask you at that point what those prescription drugs are. We do all that in the application. So it's a profile. To, so what we're doing here is we're profiling cases to say, based on what you've told us, we think you might be eligible for benefits. Passing the assessment is not an assurance of an award in any way. Just like a DEC screening or a BIC screening is not an assurance of an award. Okay? Our goal when we were building this assessment questionnaire was to try to replicate what the DEC was doing in terms of the questions they were asking and how, how they were doing that. Difficult to do because you don't get that nuance of talking to the person on the phone and picking up those subtle things. But we'll continue to try to improve that questionnaire over time in, try, in, in trying to get there. Scoring, it's meaningless to the, to the customer. 45 or above today is a pass, okay? So every one of these questions, the 40, 47 to 56 questions, has a scoring associated with it. Some have more points than others. If somebody gets to a 45 or above, we call that a pass. That's this item right here. That's the perfect world, because if they pass, they go right to them, we say, hey, you passed. We, we, we try to sell them uh, online, and then they're delivered the background of medical questionnaires. And we say, keep going, keep going. We have other categories, other outcomes. One we call a hard stop fail. These are our internal words. Hard stop fail, there's about 12 questions at the beginning of the assessment that effectively get to the, uh, the question of whether they're technically eligible for the program. Are they too old, they're too young, do they have quarters of coverage and that type of thing. We ask those 11 or 12 questions. Um, for those that pass those questions, they never know that, you know that there was a stopping point. But for those who might, you know, hey, I'm, I'm too old, I'm too young, no, I've never worked, so I'm not eligible for the program. Again, because we're focused on SSDI here. They get, they, get a, they get a fail message, if you will. 
you know, sorry, we can't help you. Here's the reason why. We, we give them a, a generic answer as to why based on the question that they answered. But we tell them, we don't, it doesn't look like you're eligible. We can't help you. Okay. We have a lot of people that come through, and we started with a category we call pass with issues. Why pass with issues? There's a lot of challenges in some of the screening. Somebody tells us they've had some workers comp. Somebody has previously filed for benefits, and we're trying to figure out where are they in the process. Okay? Um, someone in our world today, I mean, because of our way, way we think, uh, someone who says they have an LTD policy. So initially, we've called those categories pass with issues. So what do we mean by that? We're only going to talk to the people who score 45 or above, but right now what we're doing is we're sort of stopping them in the process and we're looking at that case and we're talking to them to validate whether that's a case we can take forward. We validate and we've changed this already in terms of LTD, but our challenge there is to look at it and go, oh, you're, a, you're an Aetna customer. Well, we work with Aetna. So you don't need to come through the consumer channel. You might be able to come through the commercial channel, which means the most important thing for them is they aren't paying the fee. The company, the LTD company is paying the fee. The process is the same, but who pays the fee? So we're, we're, we're still working through that. Workers' comp issues. Should you really be filing for benefits at this point? There's all kinds of subtleties. That's why we call it pass with issues. We stop them in the process and we interrupt that with our customer service team and we figure it out and then we get them going again. Pass with validation is a great tool. We know there are certain diagnoses or medical conditions, symptoms, that if they indicate those, we don't care if they score a 45 or above. Those are typically good SSDI cases. So in, in those situations where they click that button, they ultimately, come, they don't know they pass with validation, they just know they passed. But again, it's an internal category for us to say, hey, wait a minute, this is typically a good SSDI case based on their description. It's one of the things I didn't say in this. It's all about them. It's the answers they provide. You guys know that, anybody who works with, with customers, but this is only as good as the information that the customer puts in. Okay. Finally, you have fail. Difference between a hard stop, fail, and a fail is this person was technically eligible for the program, but it appeared based on the questions they answered that they don't appear to us to be a good candidate. You know, either what they're describing about what their capabilities are, what their working situation was, what kind of doctor support. Again, remember, we are a for-profit business who are trying to find people we can represent through the SSDI process. There's a lot of people who have disabilities out there, but we can't help every one of them based on where they are in their particular situation. Where, where we go with this is we're using this today, but we got to continue to analyze scoring results and we will adjust scoring as we learn the outcomes of these particular, uh, uh, the people that pass the assessment. Customer service team, 24 seven. So you go back on the internet in a big way, you do a bunch of advertising. In the world we live in today, you got to support it 24 seven. That's one of the, that's one of the um, uh, items that differentiate us from uh, a lot of the other competitors in this space. So in order to do that, we had to identify 13 employees to cover an additional 118 hours. Our traditional hours are for the most part 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. So you got 14 other additional hours each weekday and you got 24 hours uh, on Saturday and, and on Sunday. So we had to cover 118 additional hours. We could do that with 13 employees. It effectively gives us, at times we have more than two employees, but this at least gives us two employees on site at all times to cover, to, to do these chats, to do the emails, and to uh, ultimately answer the phone uh, when those people call. Remember what I said earlier, there's only one customer service team um, phone number now. So when the 24-7 team, uh, they're here 24-7 focusing on this, but at five o'clock, when we shut down our traditional teams over here, the phone's still ringing. So at five o'clock, those two or three or four people that are still around, they're answering traditional claimant phone calls, if you will. They're telling me right now that by seven, eight o'clock at night, those effectively end. Occasionally you get a random caller from somebody who's, who's um, uh, calling about their current case, but for the most part in all those hours, seven, eight o'clock till seven in the morning, 
they're not getting any phone calls. Now that'll start to build as people as we start to offer that phone number and also as people figure out there's somebody there. And if I call, somebody answers, as long as they're not busy. Okay? Um, the initial focus of the customer service team is about completing the sale for those who pass the assessment. That's their priority. Their priority isn't to help the, the current claimant pending at level one. They'll do it if they're not available, but our prior priority is the chats, the emails, and helping people are passing the assessment. That's the focus of this team. Um, they, again, they provide support with chat, email, during registration and assessment, ultimately on the phone when they pass. The team is based at HQ. A lot of people uh, sometimes question, well, why do we do that? We were originally gonna put them in this space because that's, that's the team they're on, the customer service team. About the same time we were organizing this, the regions, uh, regions who owns this building who we lease space from eliminated their 24-7 security. By eliminating their 24-7 security, it sort of put us in a position where if we have challenges overnight, not, not even security challenges, but the power goes down, the air conditioning's not working, anything happens, uh, if we were over here, we sort of have to go through two levels to solve that. By putting the team over at regions, that's our building, that's our space. We know Chris and Bob and Ben handle the electrical, they handle the air conditioner, you know, any issues. We know Barcom's the security, you know, so that's our space over there, we control it. Uh, we know that nothing's gonna go over there. In this space, you got some other tenants. Those tenants could come in in the middle of the night as well. So you might have a couple people floating around the building going, now who's that? Okay, so we decided at the end of the day, it's better to have our 24-7 team over at HQ. We had the space, we had it available. If you go in to the lobby, it's on, that, it's on that level. Just go to the left through the doors. We got 13, 15 cubicles over there and everybody's got a cubicle and a space over there and that's where they're working and it works out. Okay? They can park right up by the front door in the overnight hours, the doors are locked, um, uh, the, the, the cleaning crew makes sure everything's locked down before they walk out the door every night and the 24-7 team's uh, been working fine over there. Okay? okay. Back to you. All right, I know we're running a little bit long, so please bear with us, we'll go through this quick and then we have some more fun stuff to do. Um, so POW, you've seen the fun uh, comic book theme that came about because you are all superheroes every day with what you do to help the people get the benefits they deserve to, and using your superpowers for what each of your jobs are, that is recognized and that's why this theme is here. Empower by also is a super powerful tool uh, to help people get the benefits they deserve. So the combination, never before seen dual purpose tool, it's our exclusive technology platform for SSDI and returning to work. Customers receive powerful combination. It's like I said, it's the technology and also expertise and the people and the human factor. Never forget that this is a people to people business that's leveraging technology to help more people. Together, we deliver innovative products, superior customer service to ensure customer's journey is a successful one. This is our Empower team. It is our superpower. It's also empowered by also and the team members. That is the core of, of who we are and why we are superheroes. With Empower team members, our heroes and our customers are grounded in our core values. The beauty of this is all of the chain that's hap change that's happening, our <coughs> core values are, are true and they are, they are solid and they are good. The expert driven fairness and true helping all applies every single day. All right, we have quick time for any questions across the board about anything. Do you know when we may go into a different region? Yes. Like Actually, that's a great question. <clears throat> right now, we're region five with non-branded terms. We have already gone nationwide with branded terms, which is when somebody types in ALSUP, that's nationwide. And now we're going to start moving to display advertising nationwide this week as well. Uh, we will probably move non-branded terms nationwide, I would say, maybe in a month, two months, based upon volume. Good question. Anything else? Yeah. So because of the power of Facebook. Yes. Um, I know I'm friends with you know 
people in here, Facebook friends, are you able to to get a referral in that? Like I've reached out to people because of through Facebook private message because of posts that they may have put, mm -hmm. have put obviously, you know, to try to get a referral and help them. I mean, that that's what I love about working here is helping right. people get this benefit. And then it's just an added bonus if you are able to refer somebody and get you know get that extra money. So I've been wondering lately, like, can we just can we use our own Facebook page and put a post out there? I know you want people to go through Empower and do the assessment and this and that, but that wouldn't get us our own personal referral and dollars. Right. You know. That's that's an excellent question. Uh, we're actually last Tuesday. <laughs> Jim looked at Carl and myself and yeah. said, we need to have a meeting about uh, beefing up connections count. And through, how, yeah. through Empower. Yeah. Through Empower yeah. and how, how to leverage that so that what you're asking, you, you can actually get the, the credit, the referral, but use social media to do it. Right. Yeah. Because it's like every, I mean, think about how many Facebook yes. friends everybody yeah. has. Yeah. Exactly. You know, yeah, we all may have like the same 50 friends, but there's an extra 300 people. It's in their networks. Right. And you tell two friends and so on, and they right. tell two friends and so it's like, on. Yeah, a lot of people know I work at Alsa, but they don't right. know what Alsa is. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And that, that's a spot on question that we'll be able to take back and say, yes, there is interest. Yeah, but I'm going to point to him because as this marketing guy that came in, we drew him right into this project, which was getting this up and running. But that whole concept of continuing the marketing program, connections count, employee referral, all those things falls right in his ballywick, and he will continue to get there it's just a matter of when he can right you know so in the meantime do what you can to generate referrals absolutely do what you do what you can but he'll keep working on how to formalize that in a, in a, in a better way as we move forward absolutely yeah. yeah and for now because I came in and asked uh, I want to do a consumer-wide connections count I want anybody and anybody who I don't care who they are in out in the wild yeah. If they refer to us, we should pay them hundred bucks. They don't need. They shouldn't have to customer be a, or non customer. Customer or non customer. Yeah. And I was kind of like, slow down, Tiger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of those. Um, but yeah, to Carl's point, I that is going to be in, in the near conversation. So what I recommend is please do spread the word with Facebook. If you hear of somebody that somebody comes back through your channel, I recommend then going to the referral site that already exists and inputting the information so that you get credit for that individual when they do uh, get into the system. Well, well, did you want to add something to that, Kelsey? Yeah, you can always, so if you know someone has gone online and done the assessment and you're not getting credit, you can email me directly. Victory and I handle all of that currently to make sure you get your, your credit. So, you, Or if you're not sure if you've gotten credit, you can always feel free to reach out to us and we will make sure that it gets taken care of. You also have the traditional pearl. I don't know if, you're, if you remember that. So you have a personal US URL. Everyone here at also does that you can put out as your referral channel that you can put on Facebook. There's actually language, um, I think on allsip.com, that you can use for your Facebook page. And you, you can include your pearl, and if someone clicks on your link, it gives you credit, and it's, it goes in the traditional method that DEC will call them. You can also get pearl cards from marketing that have that on there that you can hand out. So if you weren't aware of that, so two things Excellent. there. Some of this falls to the marketing team, but that's Kelsey. If you don't know who that is, that's Kelsey in the DEC. So Kelsey's the one who's saying she's handling all the, uh, effectively, the accounting administration for all of this. But the Pearl side of it probably falls over here on the, on the marketing side. And then there's also my ALSA. If you go to my ALSA and you click on the Connections Count tab across the top, you can enter in a referral mm -hmm. right there. Yeah. Yeah. Great question. Yeah. And yes, I am in. That, that, I'm using that as fuel for the fire. We need to get there. Great questions. Any other questions? All right. Now the, for the exciting part, you've seen all of the of the uh, swag. <laughs> yes, stuff we get, right? All right, uh, Rebecca. Actually, you can buy these on on our store. Nine ninety five. Is the starting I price? See on, on the Alsa logo wear store, nine fifty, and they'll be up through August the thirty first if you go onto the resources page um, of the portal. Yep. And place an order for that. And then 
And then other information is that uh, if you signed up and you got your sticker, that's for a dress down day on Wednesday, Oct August 31st. And then we have the t-shirt that you can get. And we're also, we have an, a, a quiz on my Allsup to where you can win a $25 gift card to Target, our logoed items like the cool POW mugs. And uh, this will be all employees. Uh, entry deadline will be August 31st, so that is live as well. There's also going to be an uh, additional series of the Empower comic uh, for your entertainment and enjoyment and uh, motivation uh, for the superhero ness. And for the excitement right now, just like at Oprah, <laughs> check under your chair because there might be a slip of paper taped to the bottom of the front of your chair. And if there is, hold it in the air. Come on up and get candy. Come on up and get... And you want to tell them that concludes the... Uh... And, and everybody, once you, once you get your sticker, uh, paper, and feel free to check the empty chairs around you. And then come up and grab whatever you would like. You got candy, whatever you want. Take them apart. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you for coming, everybody. Hopefully you're excited. Thank you. All right.